Hey guys, good morning. She's Carla Nicole. How are you today? I hope everybody's doing wonderful and well. Um, I wanted to talk about something today that I think can help you get back on track just a little bit, help you get back on track. Um, a lot of times, you know, we're in this lifetime and we're feeling frustrated or we're not really focused on what needs to be done. We're not really thinking about our purpose. So um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about something that I think we really aren't spending time to pay attention to. And I'm working with my clients on this, and this has been a big focus for me um, to help people to think about. I think um, one of the things that's very important is, are we aware of our life expectancy? The reason that I feel it's important that we understand how long we're supposed to be on the planet according to lifespan and everything else is because it puts a whole different perspective on every and each day you are here. Um, I went in and started doing my own personal research to find out for an African-American black female, how long am I expected to be on the planet? I feel like it's important. I feel like a lot of times we don't want to talk about it nor face it. But one thing's for certain, we are going to age and we are going to pass on. So because of that, there needs to be a focus on what can I do to make sure that if I am going to far surpass those years that they expect me to be here, then what kind of quality of life will I have um, once I am at that point, okay? So I did my research and I found out that black African-American women live or their life expectancy is 71.1 years of age. So um, with me being 48, <laughs> that's not that far. And, um, and I, I just really am a realist and I'm really a person that focuses on what do I need to do to make sure that while I'm here, I am going to have a wonderful, vital, exciting, beautiful life, but, you know, within the realm of what I can do. So I'm working on my clients to really face this truth. Now, if you're not an African-American woman or if you're not a, you know, or whatever, definitely you need to sit down and look at how long am I supposed to be here? How long are, are they expecting me to stay on the planet? It's important and imperative that we pay attention to this. This is why. Because number one, our life path, our structure, what we're doing right now is important to know how long are they expecting me to be on the planet. And in that understanding, see, I know 71.1 years of age is what they say black females are supposed to be here. Am I going to try to beat the odds? Absolutely. I don't know. I'm not accepting of the 71.1 years, but I am a realist and I understand that they're saying on average, that's my, that is my time frame to which I'm supposed to be here. Okay. So with that realist, with that real truth, real harsh truth, I need to now be focused on what kind of quality of life am I going to have at that age or far surpass that age, which is my goal, right? And I'm sure everybody else is. My, my instructions for all of my clients, I made them go out and look and research. How long, what's your life expectancy? <laughs> Do you know it? What's your life expectancy? Do you know it? And here's the thing. We don't want to talk about life insurance either. We don't want to, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to think about my death. Well, that's how you live. <laughs> you live on a whole nother different level when you have your, your death understanding in place. We can sit here all day and deny we ain't going to leave here, but we are. We're all going to leave. It's just what it is. So my main focus for my clients is to make sure that they are aware 
of what is expected. So now, while we have that understanding, what is our diet like? Let's think about this now. I'm not talking about just your physical diet and what you put in your mouth and what you eat. I'm also talking about your media diet. What are you watching on TV, on social media? What are you reading? What are you, all these other things are hugely impactful on how long you're here. Also, what does your financial health look like? Is your financial health really in dire straits? Let me tell you something. If you have financial burdens all the time, consistently, and you're not taking it serious and you're not trying to change it, you are going to find yourself not in a very good optimal state because that burden is also a stressor on how much you enjoy your life. You can't have a good life and excited if you're worried about this bill, this bill. Oh my God, I have this debt. I don't know what I'm going to do about this. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. So what does that look like? What's your meditative, what is your meditative practices? Do you meditate? Do you sit down in your own personal space and really get busy on thinking about why am I here? What is my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing to improve the planet? These are things we got to sit down and think about because if you don't know your life expectancy, you're not really living to your, the fully, fully to where you should be. I'm just saying we as women, and I can speak about this because I am one. We often don't, we oftentimes don't want to look at our death. We don't even think about it. It's not even in the frontal lobe of our minds. However, most men, good morning, Barry. Most men think about their mortality. That's why most men are provisional. They think about, well, let's, let me make sure my wife is good. My woman's good. My women are good. Let me make sure my kids are good. Because if something happens to me, I want to make sure they're good. Women don't think about that. So I'm really harming and hurting a lot of women that I coach. I'm really hurting their ego right now. Because it's it's a harsh reality. I tell them all the time. Listen, it's all it's all well and fine. But what, do you know how long you're supposed to be here? How long they expected your heart to continue to beat? Do you? You better, you better get serious. You better pay attention. You better pay really big attention to what you're watching on TV, what you're, if you're watching TV, what are you watching on social media? All of that stuff impacts your mental health. And if your mental health isn't right, your physical health is going to quickly follow. Because if you're always having issues, always depressed, always sad, you are going to internalize that and begin to have diseases in the body i'm gonna say that again you're gonna have diseases in the body as long as your mental state is constantly in an uproar always got drama going on always this always that i can't do this i can't do that did you know what happened today that's too much so guess what happens to people that do outlive the expectancy they're miserable they can't hardly walk they're on a cane, they're on oxygen, they can't hardly breathe, they can't get up and down steps. Their life is not full of joy because they don't know when this bill is going to get paid or how it's going to get paid. All of this stuff we're carrying into our elder years, that's not healthy. You're not going to have a very hot, you know, wonderful life in your elder years. And regardless of what we want to act like, we are going to face those years. So we need to get busy now on what are we allowing in our life? Who are we partnering with sexually? Are these people that we're being intimate with? Are these people really about our self growth or are they bringing us down with all kinds of drama? <laughs> you want to carry that all into your elder years? That's not healthy. So again, like I said, Black females, if you guys are on here watching, our life expectancy is 71.1 years. I'm 48, going to be 49 in January. Do you hear what I'm telling you? And then if we go ahead and follow through with the rhetoric that we should be working until we're 65, we're only getting a good 5.1 years to enjoy. I'm sorry, 6.1 years to enjoy in our own freedom. As far as I'm concerned, I'll tell you what I have to say about that 65 being my retirement years. I'll be damned. 
<laughs> oh, no, it's not. <laughs> I'll be damned. No, you don't get to get that. That's not happening. So again, when you see your understanding of life expectancy being 71.1 years on this planet, you're going to hand them all those years for working for someone else that doesn't care a hoop about you ain't happening. So again, it comes down to, and I've been on my clients, like I'm talking about like white on rice. What's your life expectancy? What are you expecting to do while you're here? Do you have a purpose and do you know your purpose? All of these things are important because while we sit and chuckle and laugh about all the elder people we know, oh, they're just sitting around rocking in chairs and they're really not moving and they're in on a cane and they're using oxygen and he, 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 and ha, 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 and they're out of shape. And that will be you if you don't start getting serious. <laughs> We can laugh all day, but elder years are coming, whether ready or not. Every year, we are one step closer to that life expectancy. So if we don't start paying attention to our real life, we are going to find ourselves having a life that we're not happy with. Our financial health shouldn't constantly be debatable. We shouldn't have to hide our credit score. We shouldn't be uncomfortable about buying a home or a car or getting stuff done. We oftentimes don't understand that those small things that many people we see that are famous or we respect or our teachers or our, you know people we know, we see them buying cars, buying homes, and we're like, oh, that's so nice for them. Well, why isn't, it, why isn't it something you are trying to strive to do for yourself? I'm confused. They're no different than you. You can put your pants on the same way they put their pants on. It just comes down to mindset. So I'm on my clients. I know I take them through a lot of stuff. I take them through a lot of, I take my kids through stuff. They're like, what is this, mom? Why you got me doing this? I tell my son. I need you to go pay $2,100 to, to the man that's doing my uh, home improvements. I need you to take care of that. He looked at me like, what? I said, you need to pay it. Not me. And he just looked at me. I'm like, money has energy, son. If you don't touch it and feel it, it's just in your head. You need to touch your money, sir, and understand that. So when I get on him about that, he's like, I don't get it. I said, there is, trust me. There is very little that I have to say, but I am going to tell you this, son. You need to touch money because it's energy. Every hundred dollar bill out here that we're not touching because we don't have it, someone else is touching and is actually getting more hundreds because they are. I'm just saying. So, touch your money. When you cash your check, you need to touch your money. Cash the check. Touch the money. And I'm not talking about just touching 20s. Touch those hundreds. I'm getting all my clients about that as well. That's energy. People that have hundreds in their pocket, multiply it. I'm just saying, listen. Um, and if we have more optimal um, decisions that we're making in our life, we'll have a more fulfilled life. We'll have more joy in our life. We'll, we will understand, wow, I didn't know that... I could be this. You don't like your credit score? Change it. It comes down to you. It comes down to choices. If you wonder why, why is it that life insurance policies, why is the premium so high when you're older and you try to get life insurance? Because you're closer to your death. That's why. Okay. Your premiums are lower when you're younger. Okay. So they're expecting you, this is what life expectancy means. They're expecting you to be here. Like I said, I'm a black female, so I looked it up. They expect me to be here until I'm 71 years old, 71.1 years old. They expect me to be here that long, right? So if I wait until 60 to buy a policy, they're going to charge me out the butt because you waited till 60 to get this policy and your expectancy is only 11 more years. You're going, to get, you're going to pay for that. But if you start getting your life insurance when you're young, 20s and 30s, when you don't really want to pay attention to your death and pay attention to all that, 
your premiums are a lot lower. And you're also able to now get that money later on and start to use it if you need it. These are things nobody wants to talk about. But why are we not talking about life expectancy? It's important. Stop walking around here in the days like, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll be taken care of. I got a husband. Okay, and what does that mean? <laughs> that doesn't mean anything either. You've got to be thinking about you, your self-preservation. What is important is, am I able to take care of myself? Am I able to make sure that while I'm here on the planet, I'm able to walk, move, dance. My aunt called me last night. She said, guess what? I said, what's that, Aunt B? She said, I am going to be 85. I said, let's go. I said, you beat the odds. You beat the odds. And she told me, she said, you're right. I did beat the odds. I said, right. Do you know our life expectancy is supposed to be 71.1? I even asked her, did you know that? She said, no. She said, well, I far surpassed that. I said, yes, you did. However, not only did you far surpass it, you also are not on a walker. You're not on oxygen. You've done some choices in your life to where you made sure that you have your health and strength. My aunt doesn't have to go and have people take care of her and look out for her and pay her bills. She does it herself. And she's 85. You hear what I'm saying? So she has been mindful of how she takes care of her body. Now, we don't want to talk about how much, how important it is on what we watch on TV and what we allow people to say and do in our presence. But if you don't set those boundaries, that will also impact how long you're here. You hear what I'm saying to you? I'm going to say that again because a lot of times we don't think about that. Yes, it impacts your life big time. Allow just anybody in your life that's toxic, a nuisance, always causing drama in your life. You're going to find out that it's going to impact you in a negative way and you're not going to be enjoying your life. You see what I'm saying? It's imperative we start getting serious about understanding what we allow in our lives will highly impact our lives and will also cause us to have health issues when you constantly have drama and headaches and all that it's not healthy when you constantly have drama and you're always angry easily angered and always frustrated about stuff do you know that those headaches begin to internalize into high blood pressure you have all kinds of ailments because of it i'm telling you the truth trust me you have all kind of cholesterols high because you're eating garbage. Every time you pick that fork up and put something in your mouth, you need to ask, is this life or death? Is this, is this going towards my life or is this going towards my death? Now, don't get anal where you can't enjoy something. It's okay to have fun every now and then, but don't. You should be tipping the scales on healthy choices for your, for your food versus not so good choices. And you know what I'm talking about. You should be eating more salads. You should be eating more nuts and things of that nature. Better, you get rid of all that starch and stuff. That's not healthy. This all comes down to what is it going to affect my life expectancy? Are you guys taking your herbal blends and stuff? I take my herbs every day. I drink, I'm drinking my tea right now. See, this is what I'm saying. But that's a choice though. We cannot continue to live in our life like we are a beneficiary of our life we need to be getting serious about it and we need to be focusing on what do i need to do to make sure that in this lifetime i'm not going to be on a walker because i'm going to move my body i'm going to get physical i'm going to run i'm going to walk i'm going to do yoga i'm going to do exercising and if you if all of those things needs to be in place then we need to, am I drinking enough water? Am I making sure the people in my company I have, are they also like-minded or are they constantly causing me nothing but a headache? Because all they ever do is go on and on and on about, well, why don't you do this? And why don't you do that? They're judgmental of me because they're jealous of me. I got to get rid of that. That's energy. And that energy will go into internalize into my spirit and into my soul. And then it will cause dis-ease in my body. Period. 
Everybody on this live, I appreciate all of you for being here. Trust me. I am a wisdom coach. I've been doing coaching for a long time, baby. Been doing coaching for a long time and I love my coaching. But I have to be honest with you. If you're not taking heed to your life expectancy and you're not paying attention to how long you're supposed to be here, look it up. Google that. I'm telling you, black women on here, 71.1 years is how long we're supposed to be here. Hey, Tune, listen, it's about the life expectancy. What is your life expect expectancy, black men? Do you know? You should. You should be looking it up. You should be looking up and seeing how long are they expecting me to be here? I need to know what, what, what's, what's, the, what's the word on that. Because your life expectancy is imperative for you to know. Because now you can make different changes. You need to make different. Okay, I should be here this long. Okay. So if I'm going to be here this long, I need to know, well, 65 isn't okay for me to retire. <laughs> I'm not waiting. I'm not giving you 65 years. And I'm only supposed to be here for 71.1 years. Ain't happening. Not happening. I'm very, very sorry. That's not happening. So with that said, I've got to make some changes for me. Now, I'm not telling everybody to do like me, but I'm not giving them another 20 years of my time in life. I'm not, it's not happening. Um, and again, this is why I say it's imperative. We pay attention to stuff, to certain things and we have to be honest with self. Am I willing to do these things? Yes or not? Yes or no? And if the answer is no, then we can't do it. We have to move on and start doing and making other decisions based upon what we know. Our knowledge helps us to make better more optimal, greater decisions. If we don't know for sure what we can do to change some things, we won't. Period. We got to be mindful of what we're doing. It's really true. So I want you guys to really take heed to what I'm saying. I care about all of you. I know that it's not really um, a discussion amongst us women to talk about how long we're supposed, they're expecting us to be here. But the truth of the matter is, if we are taking in all kinds of negative energy, it is going to impact our lives. It's going to impact our health. It's going to impact how we parent. It's going to impact a lot of things. And it's not good nor healthy. So we need to be mindful. Okay, I need to make sure that I'm able to do certain things that's going to make sure that my life is not going to look like that. I've had many elders that I'll be like, um, so impressed by how well their skin looks and wow, what are you doing? Well, I eat better. I don't eat this. I do this. I do that. I'm like, wow, I'm gonna take heed to that. I love that. And then I've seen other elders where I'm like, you're not even really walking and, and you're struggling and I won't be that. I look at that and I, I'll, I'll say in my own heart and mind, that won't be me. By my own will, of course, things happen. But if it's within my bounds of being able to make sure I'm not going to become this, I'm going to be more knowledgeable of what do they do. So I start mirroring those that have certain patterns and, and, and certain behaviors. And I'm like, okay, so you do this? Oh, wow. So you're not eating that? Okay. And you're doing that. And what do you watch on TV? Oh, you don't watch TV. Oh, you read. Okay. So I need to. And then I just take pieces and parts from the different people. And I start saying, okay, that's the life I want to mirror. It's not going to be exact, of course. But I'm going to take their, their example and apply it to me. You see what I'm saying? If I really want a better, joyful life. I have to start sitting down and making decisions and changing some things and being honest with self, period. Make sure you share this video. If you're looking for a coach, inbox me. I'm an inbox away. You can also go to my, um, my coaching page. It's called Carla Nicole Wisdom Coaching Services and just go on there and book. It's just that easy. <laughs> or you can inbox me and say, hey, I need, I need you. I need you. And that's fine. But I'm a tough coach. I'm going to make you do some thinking. I'm going to make you do some work. I'm going to make you understand. Listen, it's not always about trying to be cute out here. That's fine. But what are you doing internally to make a difference in your life? What changes are you doing? 
Who is your prime example as to, oh, I want to become that. I love what that person became. Man, that looks good. I want to do that. Okay, but you have to, you have to make sure you're, you're digesting those examples. Instead of saying, all I ever see is my grandmother that ate all that food and she gained all that weight. Then she had gout and she had high blood pressure and diabetes and she had this. So I'm going to have it doesn't have to be your truth you can detach from that image and go and and begin to use different examples and start to adopt that and allow those examples to impress on you no i don't have to be that i can be something different i can be dedicated to change and you can you just have to make that decision everything i told you right now your financial health your, your physical health, your mental health, all of those come down to one decision. I want to make a difference. I want to be, I want to be more than I am right now. Okay, do it. What's stopping you? Make sure y'all share this. <laughs> I'm out of here, guys. Also, if you're looking to have a smile and sip party, I'm starting to book for November. My smile and sips, I will come to you. So if you're local, local meeting like Northeast Ohio, Listen, I'll come. Um, and I bring my jewelry. So, you know, I create jewelry. I will bring my jewelry. And we will do a smile and sip party. Five people or more. Okay. So, my smile and sips, um, we either sip on wine or we sip on tea. But I teach you my mantra, my smile mantra. So, smile stands for study, meditate, inspire, laugh, and elevate every day. I'll teach you my mantra. Then after that, one of your guests will get a bodywork session for me for 30 minutes while I'm there. And then um, you get the same too. Or you can get $75 worth of free jewelry from me just for having the party. All right. So if you want to do that, like I said, I'm booking right now for November. If you definitely want to do one, inbox me or go to my page, Carla Nicole Wisdom Coaching Services page, and just inbox me that you would like to book a smile and sip. All right. So again, like I said, I'm really getting you guys to shake out of your coma, thinking that you're going to live forever and look at that life expectancy. Pay attention. It will change you. It will. You'll start to be like, oh, I ain't got that many days left. <laughs> I got to get busy. I got to get serious. I got to get in my purpose. I got to do something. And if it's not, I got to question why not. It should be. Trust me. So this is Carla Nicole, your coach. I'm signing off. Best kept. Have a great day, guys. Bye.